Welcome back friends. Uh, we are doing sequence alignments and we are trying to understand how computer system process our information and they align two sequences together. We have done the sequence alignment using global sequence alignment technique. Now we will be analyzing the sequence using local sequence alignment. Okay. Now let's say we are going to align these two sequences and ATCG and TCC. If these two are the sequence of our interest, we are trying to align this sequence using local sequence alignment. Now remember I have told you before what is local sequence alignment and the very beginning introductory video about sequence alignments. The local sequence alignments are dealing uh, with the segment of our total gene because if the sequence is too long, we need to look for sequence homology in so small segment of the gene. We will be doing this. Uh, in those cases, we, we are doing this local sequence alignment. So instead of global, we will be looking at local sequence alignment. Okay. Now for the local sequence alignment, this scoring system should be there. The rules for making or filling the scoring matrix is obviously similar. Everything is same. Simply, instead of putting the values in scoring matrix in real values, just like minus 2, minus 5, minus 10, minus 12, plus 2, plus 5, we have seen. In this case, we will be putting the values only in binary. So here, the values only in binary number. That means it's only 1 or 0. Any number inside this scoring matrix, if it comes minus value, then we will put the number 0 as score if the value comes a positive 5 or uh, say positive 2 positive 1 whatever we put a value simply 1 so 1 means the value positive 0 means the value negative so in this case of local alignment we simply care about putting positive or negative values not distinguishing the amount of value simply by telling that this value is positive so place it 1 this value is negative place it a 0 okay so this is very important and uniqueness about this local alignment so let's start aligning these two sequences but before going into this start I will recommend you to go back and look for the video global alignment in my youtube channel then come back to this video because otherwise you don't understand a single word that I'll, I'm going to tell you because I'm going, not going to tell the detailed mechanism of filling the scoring matrix in this video. I'm simply uh, refer back to my global sequence alignment videos simply telling you the new fundas that are going on here. Rest of the things will remain the same. So you start to look for the global alignment first, learn it, then come back to watch this video. Okay, so it's my request to you. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to understand. So let's begin with uh, the matrix preparation. So we'll be placing our coordinates. So here we placed our coordinates. Now then we put our values, our sequence. Now this for, for the sequence we must put a gap first. Remember the basics. After the gap, let's put this sequence here. A, T, C and G. And in this direction we put T, C and C. Then let's draw the row and column. So these are the rows and the columns like that. So we have done the matrix preparation. So matrix is done. Now we need to fill the first one because both are coming from gaps. So the first value always becomes 0. We all know that. But from now on we must fulfill, remember, the column 1, the first column and the row last before doing anything else. Because until and unless we fill the column 1 and row last row, we cannot do the further study. So, cannot fill the rest of the boxes. So, here start filling them and simple filling that means simply adding the gap values. Consider here the Scored, uh, scores, uh, the scoreboard is simply this one. For a match, it's plus one. For a mismatch, it's plus minus two. For a gap, it's minus. Uh, sorry, for a mismatch, it's minus one. For a gap, is minus two. 
So here we're simply adding the gap values to get the value for column and row, first column and the last uh, row in this, this case. Okay. In this case, actually, it's a row one because we begin from this point. So it's a row one, it's a column one. But if you're looking at this top, you look at last row. So that's why I'm telling it last row. Anyways, now let's add. Uh, so here's the zero. Adding the gap value minus two with zero is minus two. Then adding the value again with minus two is minus four. Then minus six and minus eight. Similarly, minus two, minus four, minus six. So now, as we have filled uh, this gap values, uh, remember in this case what we need to do. Here is the uniqueness of the system. Here comes the uniqueness. So what is the uniqueness about the system? And we know all the values that we are getting here, all the values that we are getting are in minus form, right? As I have told you before, this local alignment only understand binary language. If it is a negative value, place a zero. If it is a positive value, place a one. Here all the values are negative. So simply place zero instead of all these values. Getting it? This is the mistake students trying to make all the time because they just trying to uh, overlap this uh, global and local alignment. Now this is again an empirical rule of local alignment that if you are doing a local alignment then you must put zeros in the first column and first row. It become much more easier. Don't think about anything. Whatever gap value they are given. Don't think about that. Simply put zero in the first row and first column and this is the the, the, this is a rule for that. Okay, and why this is, we need to put zero because you have seen all the values that we are getting are in minus value, and if it is a minus in this case, so if it is a negative, we must have a zero for that, right? After that, we'll begin with this one. So simple three rules: the value can come from box beside, it can come from box bottom, it can come from box diagonal. Now, if it is come from coming from this one, so this one minus two, it's a minus two value. It is coming from this one. This one minus two is again minus two. And if it is coming from this diagonal box, then t with a is a mismatch, so the value is minus one with zero is minus one. So all the values that we are getting, all the probability minus two minus one minus two, whatever we are getting, are in minus range. So simply we we'll, we put here a zero because minus means zero. Now here again for gap minus two, if it is coming from here minus two, if it is coming from this diagonal box, then you need to look for the sequences. So here the sequence is t, here is also t, so it's a match. Now for a match, the score is plus one. So the three values that we are getting here is one minus two, then one plus one, then minus two. Now the value we get plus one is the highest, so we'll keep this value. But remember, whatever plus value we get, we simply put a 1 here. So we simply put a 1 in this place. Because we are getting a positive value. Now here, minus, uh, so now if the value is coming from this box, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. If it is coming from this, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Now if it is uh, coming from this diagonal box, let's look at the sequence T and C. So T and C is a mismatch. So minus 1 with 0 is minus 1. So the highest value is minus 1. Now, as the value is in minus one, we simply put a zero, because value in zero, a value in minus, simply uh, denoted by zero. Here, the last one, zero minus two is minus two, zero minus two minus two. Now it is coming from T and G, which is a mismatch. So minus one with zero is a minus one. Again, the highest value is minus one, but still the value is in minus or negative. So we simply put a zero in this place. Okay. Similarly. Start filling this. You uh, start try to fill uh, this gap on your own. This is much more easier. So now let's do it. Zero minus two is minus two. Zero minus two minus two. Now here C and A is a mismatch. So minus one. So we'll be putting a zero here also. Here zero minus two is minus two. One minus two minus one. C and T is a mismatch. So minus one. Zero minus one. So whatever we value we getting minus. So it's a zero. This one zero minus two is minus two. Zero minus two is minus two. But here from the diagonal box C and C is a match so match value is plus one so it's a plus one so now as we get the highest value plus one so if the value is in positive term so it put a one here simply now here minus uh, one minus two is minus one zero minus two minus two C and G is a mismatch so we get a value of minus one here so whatever thing you are getting everything is in minus so simply put a zero now the last 
rows. So here 0 minus 2 is a minus 2, 0 minus 2 minus 2. C and A is a mismatch, so minus 1. Whatever we are getting in minus, so the answer will be a 0. Now after that, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, 0 minus 2 minus 2. Now C and T is a mismatch again. So again for the mismatch minus 1. Everything, the highest value is again minus 1, but still it's a negative value. So we'll be putting a 0. After that, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. But if it's coming from diagonally, then C and C is a match, so you get a plus 1. The highest value is plus 1. So as the value is a positive, we simply put a 1 in this place. Okay. After that, last box, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Now C and G is a mismatch and it is coming from this one. So mismatch is minus 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. And the highest value here is 0. So now that is a question. If we get a value 0, then what we will put? We simply put 0. So we put the 0 here. Okay.